Hi, I'm Chris. I'm Susanna. And we're hitting the trail. Welcome back to the channel. So if you are even thinking about planning a trip to Key West, you need to watch this video. So we did nearly four weeks in Key West and there is so much to do whether it's just for couples or for families or there is something for everybody. Yeah, so if you're thinking, uh, I want to go down to Key West, but I don't know if it's really good for families or for kids, again, yeah. it's for everybody. It's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you a lot of the things that we did that we really, really enjoyed. Because again, like Susanna said, four weeks. So we had a lot of time to experience almost everything that we wanted to on our list. Mm -hmm. The first thing that people will kind of wonder is how do you get around down there? So if you want to rent a car and, and drive around and try to get from place to place, probably not the best deal. Because parking is atrocious. Even if you rent a golf cart, you actually have to pay for parking. Yes. Um, and bicycles, you can rent bicycles, but if you have kids, it may not be the best idea because bicycling, um, the streets are very narrow. So you're kind chaos. of going along with we found out the hop on hop off trolley tour was the best way to get around. Whether you want to do one day or multiple day trips, uh, Old Town Trolley, they can set you up with whatever tickets you need. We're not going to give prices in this because prices right. fluctuate. Uh, but they also include, you can also get packages that include um, doing some of the sightseeing while you're there mm -hmm. included into it. Yep. So if you are military, retired military, or you have just access to get onto the military base, Go to MWR on NAS Key West and buy your tickets from there because you'll get a discount. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay, so hop on, hop off. 13 stops, 90 minute tour. You can get on really at any stop, but it does um, officially start and stop at Mallory Square, which is one of the biggest things there because there's so much to do in that small area. Mm -hmm. And they give you a really good history on the area. They talk about the, the folks that have lived there that kind of shaped. Key West mm -hmm. um, and then out of those 13 stops there's something like a hundred different attractions and they tell you where to go mm -hmm. and for each this stop. stop you can see you know this place this place this place and this place it's within walking distance so mm -hmm. all right so and it goes it goes around the entire island mm -hmm. um, and like I said it gives you the history um, it's kind of neat because it talks about you know Hemingway and Truman uh, it gives you the, the cigar history, uh -huh. the cigar business, the shrimping history. You know, they've tried multiple things down there to trains, a train at one point, <laughs> yeah. multiple things to kind of get this um, area up and running. If you're also, sorry, no, if you're staying at, um, they do have stops at some of the hotels around the island so you can get on there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what else did we do? Well, I think a lot of people go to Key West because of the beautiful water. Makes sense. It's an yeah. island. Yeah. So, th this next All right. <laughs> it's a key. Uh, we're going to go over some of the water activities that we did. Now, what we did find is that if you book multiple uh, events, activities. Multiple activities with the same company, you tend to get a discount. Mm -hmm. So we found Sunset Water Sports. And I think we initially picked them uh, because they, they seem to have the most activities. That and they we were available. To do. Mm -hmm. They were available for discounts on, on base as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we just kept going down the list of, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Uh, so the first thing we did the um, dolphin snorkel and sunset combo so you um, they offer a morning one they offer a sunset combo we did the sunset one so you go out in the boat and you on your way out you see dolphins you see oh, you get a little bit of a tour of the area um, out to the reef once you get out to the reef they provide your wetsuits and snorkeling gear um, if you need wetsuits you have to pay for the wetsuits, but at the time it was cold, so we needed the wetsuits. <laughs> um, you get like an hour and a half, two hours to snorkel, and then you get back on, and you can have um, refreshments once you get back on the boat. Yeah, so on the way back, after snorkeling, after doing the other stuff, that's or when they Or if you're have, not snorkeling. And if you're not snorkeling, yeah, then you can have bottomless draft beers uh, and all the soda you can drink. Mm -hmm. And so then after the snorkeling, then you come through the, oh, it's not a bay, it's just this, this open area where all the boats are, mm -hmm. and that's where everybody goes for sunsets. And then you guys cruise back. I wasn't there for this one, but you guys cruise back during the sunset. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, know, beautiful. The sunsets are amazing. The best way to see it is on a boat, as long as you have an unobstructed view, which we pretty much did. Yep. Um, that leads us to our next thing. We also did a sunset dinner cruise. That one I was able to go to. Mm -hmm. um, so that one is, it's two hours. 
and you get a pretty good dinner. I mean, mm -hmm. for the price, I thought, oh, okay, it's, it's gonna be just kind of chintzy, but it was really good. Yeah, and you get your choice of meat and then sides to go with mm -hmm. it. You get all you can drink drinks. Mm -hmm. Now, if you wanna pay for the premium drinks, it's a little bit extra. Uh, and then, you know, kids, you can have soda, water, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they've got, uh, sometimes they have steel drums. Which we yeah, they have some sort of entertainment. Um, this one happened to be steel drums, and Corbin loved it. Check Corbin this out. It, yeah. Yeah. I think Corbin was the only. No, there was a couple other kids mm -hmm. on there. Um, so it is. It's family oriented. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure maybe there's some other ones that maybe aren't so much. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Sunset Water Sports did a great job. So another one that is really family oriented. And again, I wasn't able to go to this. So it depends on how you feel about heights, but parasailing. <laughs> so I have a little bit of a fear of heights, so it was not the, um, it was a little bit traumatizing for me, but once we got up in hold, the air, it was on, okay. Hold on, watch this. You good? Woohoo! This is terrifying. <laughs> Just hold on. I'm sorry, the video is awful because I'm crying. It's so fun, though. Oh, God! Whitney! Ah! <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> So would you say you enjoyed the parasailing even though you were feared for your life? So the going out there in the boat was great. Watching other people do it was great. Doing it myself, a little bit traumatizing, but the views that you get are super amazing. With Almost all of these things, if you can do the morning sessions, do it, because that's another way to save money too. A lot of them, they're just cheaper rates, because I think most people don't get up in Key West until about 10 o'clock, maybe 11. Depends on how much party you did the night before. The next water thing that we did was one we hadn't planned on doing. But by far our favorite. Yeah, jet skiing. So there's a lot of different companies that offer jet ski tours that go all the way around the island. Mm -hmm. um, but we stuck with Sunset Water Sports because in all the times we use them, they've been very professional. The equipment's great, uh, and again, because we've done so many things, we got more of a discount. Mm -hmm. So we did, what was it, an hour and a half tour? It was an hour and a half tour. Um, you get a little bit of history and background of the island, plus you get to see, you know, because you stop a few times to let the slower riders catch up to the rest. But you get to go through, like, the mangrove areas, mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, these things aren't slow. So if you've never done it before, they will give you some safety training. I mean, they give everyone safety training, but they'll give you some, some lessons on how to use it. If you're born after 1988, you actually have to take a Florida boater safety course. But if you're older like we are, um, apparently they think we know exactly what we're doing. Big wave! Wow. <laughs> and we do. one person and two person so if you you know want to go with your spouse uh -huh. or if you have children they can go with you on the jet ski yeah Corbin just latched on to me like velcro <laughs> I mean that kid was just like oh. but he did a really good job filming yeah. all the and footage if you go just a little bit too fast you can throw the person on the back off we saw that happen to some of those <laughs> other people in front of us <laughs> and from our from our spot our, where we were RVing we were, we were boondocking we were on the water and we saw these tours go by all the time and you always have people falling off. But we didn't. We did good. Yeah, we did well. We did good. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so now the last thing is uh, not with Sunset Water Sports, but um, we want to set something up so we do. We like kayaking. If you've mm -hmm. seen, uh, we did clear kayaking up in Silver Springs, Florida. And we have some kayaking videos from home in Maine uh, mm -hmm. on, on our lake. Yep. So we did the um, Lazy Dog kayaking. Um, it's a two-hour tour. Uh, it's really um, informative. So while you're out there, you're, you're paddling through the mangroves. Uh, the, the tour guide is they're showing you the different types of animals, the plant life. So anything they see, they'll stop and they'll, they'll show everyone on the tour because it's an eco tour. They want you to see the environment uh, and the animals. Why, the yeah, life. they want to explain why it is the way it is, what the mangroves, how they per, um, participate in protecting the wildlife of Florida. Hurricanes come through the animals and wildlife go into the mangroves to protect themselves. So it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Now the next one, we 
we're just like almost everyone else. So we thought that uh, there was a lot of beaches in Key West, and it turns out there aren't. There aren't. There are very few. Um, that's so that, why you do have all these water sports. You can go out in the ocean and do it that so way. So there's no waves really that come in, and you need waves to smash the rocks to create sand. So there's not a lot of sand in Key West either. But there are a few beaches. The, the first one, the most popular, is at Fort Zachary Taylor, the historic state park. Mm -hmm. um, very inexpensive to get in, um, stay all day. They have restaurants, restrooms. Uh, there's obviously the fort is there, um, and a big widespread of beach. Mm -hmm. You can, yeah, you can go, they have free picnic tables or you can just go lounge around on the beach. But if you want to rent chairs, you want to rent the umbrellas, umbrellas mm -hmm. um, there's, like she said, there's drinks. Yeah, they um, do have little tiki bars um, that you can, as well as a regular, you know, there's a little shop. Where Look, there's like a cafe and, and a shop right there. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a great place to go spend a whole day because you can go to the beach and then you can go explore uh, the, the fort, which is amazing. And I don't know if you knew this or not, but... Fort Zachary Taylor has the largest cache of Civil War armory in the world. I did not know that. All the cannons and stuff, and while we were there, they were actually having uh, a muster. They had Civil War reenactors and their families that were dressed up in period pieces and living there. It was, it was really cool. Uh, but there's something seemingly always going on mm -hmm. at uh, that fort. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of the other beaches, we, we just have these written down as Higgs Beach and Smathers Beach. I don't know if those ones are free or not. Um, those are on the airport, well, the Smathers Beach is on the airport side of the island um, where all the hotels and stuff are. So I imagine the hotels probably have their own little sections of the beach. You just walk across the highway and there you are. Yep. All right. For the nature lovers, whether that's plant life, bird life, life, life. They have the Key West Tropical Forest and Botanical Garden. So there's a few trails out there and it um, described, you know, describing all the different types of uh, plants and palm trees. I didn't know there were so many different types of palm trees, honestly. No. So yeah, you can go walk around out there. Uh, they've got some sculptures and stuff, but they also have a collection of boats that Cubans used uh, to, to come to the US. It's pretty interesting what they built and what they put their lives in just to come to America for freedom. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. And then there's also the Key West Butterfly and Nature Conservatory. So you go in and there's a big store, first of all, and then you go in and you um, walk through this little butterfly um, haven. It's very cool. And there's so many different colors of butterflies and different types of butterflies and they'll land on you. And oh, there's tons of birds as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple of flamingos and while we were there. Turtles and whatnot. Mm -hmm. the Flamingos were in their season, and so one of them was romancing the other one. He was very persistent. I I thought, yeah, we're gonna go to a butterfly thing, but it was really, really cool. Yep. All right, another place that you can go to explore and see some nature is at the aquarium, uh, and this is a very unique aquarium. It was built in 1935, and it actually was the first open air aquarium. Mm -hmm. um, in the 60s, because of all the, the rain and stuff, they were starting to get a lot of uh, mold and mildew on some of the things. So algae. algae. In algae. order to keep that out, they put a roof on. But it is it is a cool little aquarium. It has touch pools. Um, they do, uh, what did we see, the turtle? We saw a turtle show where they taught us about the turtles that they have in captivity. Mm -hmm. um, most of the turtles there, either they were injured in some sort, mostly by um, Boat propellers, that's one of the most common injuries. Well, at the aquarium, they do, um, they've got educational programs for all ages, but you know, really I think it focuses more towards children. And then if you get this ticket in conjunction with the Shipwreck Museum, which we're gonna talk about next, you get a discount. We love discounts. Mm -hmm. in, in Key West, like, they're all about they, discounts. <laughs> you gotta find discounts, so you have to find a cheap way to do this. We were always trying to find, okay, how can we save a little bit of money? Across the street from the aquarium is the Shipwreck Museum, and initially, I think we just kind of thought, shipwreck, shipwrecks, what's mm -hmm. the big deal? Until you go inside, yeah. and you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, so you know, in the early 1800s, Key West was the richest city in the nation. And the reason for that is because of the wrecking industry. So because the Florida Reef runs around um, the Keys, the ships that would come through there, there was, I can't remember how many, every week. We have got numbers here. At a least ship every week. A ship every week. That would wreck on the reef. Mm -hmm. So the first person to get out to the ship became the wreck captain. Mm -hmm. And they were responsible for assisting getting the crew off and then salvaging as much as possible from that ship. 
and they would bring that back. And then they would get a bounty for it and they would split it amongst their crew members. They would have auctions and people came from all over the country for these auctions. Uh, so a lot of the, the larger buildings on Key West were the warehouses that were built for holding all this salvage. It's really kind of interesting. And so they have a tower that you can climb because whenever <laughs> there was a wreck, they would ring the bell and the town would know, oh, and they would run. You know, anybody that does that sort of thing would run to the shore to get there first to collect the, you know, be the one to ship captain or wreck captain. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of unique uh, museums that you can do at. Yeah, because again, there's so much history and some very unique personalities. Uh, but one of the big ones was Ernest Hemingway, and he lived there in Key West for eight years, but he had a house there for uh, much longer than that. Um, Hemingway liked to drink, so uh, when he built his fence, he's got a very crooked fence, um, but he had this house that was built in the late 1800s and um, walking through there and seeing all the stuff that's in there was actually, it was stuff from Ernest Hemingway, his collection. Mm -hmm. So you really get a glimpse into his life. And he wrote some of his most famous works while he lived in that house. There's also, if you know your children, you know, will find it fun to try to count the cats. Mm. So there are over 60 polydactyl, polydactyl cats. So many toed cats <laughs> um, there. And they're all come from you know, they're just generation after generation after generation of cats and... Yeah, at some point somebody gifted uh, Ernest Hemingway a polydactyl cat and they're all the offspring from yeah, that cat. from that cat. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting, you know, they have little houses and little, um, there's you know, a graveyard. here's where the babies are, you know, the little kittens and stuff that are, yeah, it's just crazy. There's a, there's a cemetery. Yep. So, uh, and then, you know, there's some interesting stories. There's always uh, you know some myths and stuff associated with places and one of them that is associated with the Hemingway house is the last red scent so his second wife well Hemingway, well, Hemingway liked the box and his wife didn't want him getting hurt so while he was away on a correspondence trip for months uh, she had his boxing ring taken out and had uh, a pool put in now this pool cost $20,000 in 19, was it 1938? 1938, which is over $340,000 in today's money. Yeah, so he comes home early from his trip. The pool's not completely done yet. And he's like, what is this? You have just spent all of my money. And so there's there's a quote that says, Pauline, you spent all but my last penny, so you might as well have that. And he pulled a penny out of his pocket and he threw it uh, at her. It hit her shoulder, bounced on the ground, and it laid there and he left it there. And according to folklore, she took that penny, had it put in like plastic, and left it there. And so it's actually embedded now in the concrete, so you can see Ernest Hemingway's last red scent. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of interesting. Now this is a cash-only place. There's, I think there's discounts for active duty military, but other ways there's not, and it's not cheap. Five people with $75 for Hemingway. And it's very popular, so make sure you get there early so that you can in fact, get in. And then just down the road from that is the Truman Little White House, which we took the tour of. Uh, we did get a discount on base for it. They don't allow photography or video inside the Little White House. So this is why we only have the outside. <laughs> yeah. So the story goes that uh, President Truman was kind of ill during his presidency and his doctor told him, you need to go to a warm climate. So Admiral Nimitz said, hey, we have a place down in Key West. Uh, it's old officer quarters. You can go down there, recuperate. So he went down for a week and he, pr he loved it so much he promised to come back. And so he came back 11 times during his presidency. And then five more times after his presidency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing when you walk through there, it is actual stuff from the last renovation from Truman's period, but other presidents have stayed there. Kennedy, um, Clinton. Clinton, yep. Yeah, it's been used a lot. And uh, it's just, it's really neat. Cause again, you're, you're touching a piece of history, uh, mm -hmm. American history. One of the more um, odd places that we went to was the Fort East Martello <laughs> and Robert the Doll Museum. Robert the Doll is a very famous handmade doll. And we'll just say that, we need to respect Robert. Uh, but the museum itself, it's an old Civil War fort that they turned into a museum. Mm -hmm. And it's got stuff on the cigar industry. The wrecking industry, mm -hmm. Civil War artifacts. Um, there's a sculpture garden. Yep, and there's a tower that you can climb and you get a beautiful view of the... Atlantic Ocean. I was trying to figure out which bay it is. I think it's the Gulf of Mexico. It's pointing out towards the Atlantic Ocean, but they say it's not the Atlantic Ocean. It's the Strait of Florida. 
because you have to get to the reef, which is far out there. But Robert the doll. So if you're gonna go and you wanna see Robert the doll and you wanna take your picture with him, this is very important. You must ask Robert for permission to take your picture with him. If you don't, you some may be cursed. Yep, some people feel like they have been cursed mm -hmm. by him. Um, and it's interesting because he is so famous that there are letters to Robert the doll from politicians and celebrities. And children and you know, all yeah. these different. So Robert, thank you for letting us take our picture with you. We appreciate it and you are a wonderful, wonderful doll. Mm -hmm. So one of the other unique tours we did was a food tour. We like food. We like food and Key West has some amazing food. Not just key lime pies, but they have so many other things too. Yeah, like Cuban food and um, I mean there's, there's cuisine from everywhere there, but you've got Caribbean, Cuban. And so we found, it's called the Southernmost Food Tour and they get that Southernmost Food Tasting and Cultural Walking and Tour. Cultural Walking Tour, my bad. So uh, on this tour, you go to five different places. Mm -hmm. Five different restaurants mm -hmm. or bars or whatever. And so we started at El Saboni, which is Cuban Amazing, food. we ended up going back two more times because it was so good. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so you, you get a sample of their food and the, the, the tour guide talks about the culture of Cuban food and how it's influenced Key West. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of walk along the streets. Uh, you do stop, you have rum at a rum bar. Mm -hmm. You learn about rum and then all the different foods that you get you get a taste and you get a little bit of background why it's here maybe background on the chef mm -hmm. and then yes you so have. this is a walking tour um, it was three hours the total distance walked is only one and a half miles and it's very slow you know you go along and you stop and you eat and you go along and you stop and they eat so it's very it's very good for kids because they can you know take a break in between get a little snack and and you move on. And if you have any dietary restrictions, you just let them know when you book the tour and they will make sure that mm -hmm. there's something there for you. But if you want to have the best lobster roll, I'm a Mainer and we have lobster rolls, you know, everywhere in Maine, but the best lobster roll is where? This is DJ's Clam Shack. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. Her folks were with us and, um, I mean, they, they live in Maine. They've had a lot of lobster rolls. They, they, they Her family introduced me to lobster rolls. I absolutely love them. Mm -hmm. This place, well, just watch. So we've we've eaten a lot of lobster rolls, and we're at DJ's Clam Shack where they say, supposedly, this is the world's best. We're not supposed to tell anybody, but because they had a low crowd this morning, they actually made a hot butter one for Susanna. Yes. And Ugh. Dad and I got overstuffed in there. Stuffed. They are stuffed. Over. <laughs> This is the best. I think this is the best lobster with the red. Yeah. So I just want to say, so we're from Maine, right? You guys have ruined lobster rolls. Oh, yeah. There is, this is absolutely the best lobster we've ever had. Thank you. It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And then, you know, this place was recognized on Triple D, Diners, Dives, and Drives um, by Guy Fieri. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's tried them and he's, you know, promoting them as well. So you gotta do it, you just gotta do it. Yeah, well worth and you don't mind. have to do it just in Key West. They have um, other locations, Indian Shores, Florida, and they also have um, three in New York. Yep. Obviously there's a lot of drinking that's going on in Key West, a lot. Mm -hmm. But there's a couple distilleries there. The first one uh, we didn't visit, but we wanted to go to a, a distillery and sample some of the, the goods. So we went to the Key West Legal Rum Distillery. It's a small distillery. Uh, they have 15 minute tours, 15 to 20 minute tours uh, from noon until 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, they're free and then you get to sample some of their products. Uh, you actually get to try it. A clear and unflavored rum. Guys, I'm standing on this side. I'm going to wear my down, palms out oh. if you're interested. All good guys. Curse, swear, I've heard it all in this room. Oh, man. <laughs> if, you, if you're looking to stop by, taste some great rum, go there. So your trip to Key West isn't complete unless you get your photo taken at the southernmost point buoy. Yeah, so the buoy is the most photographed spot in all of Key West, which is kind of interesting. But it is this giant buoy at the southernmost tip of Key West. So you are actually closer to uh, Cuba, Cuba mm -hmm. than you are to a Walmart. You hear that a lot on the on the tours. Yeah, because Cuba's only 90 miles away, but the closest Walmart is like 140. <laughs> yeah. So you'll see, I mean, there's everybody's lining up to get their pictures taken there. So you could wait in line 10, 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, 
but there are some restaurants nearby. There's some very good restaurants nearby, little shops to look around at. And there's um, the southernmost houses there, but then there's also the southernmost southernmost house, mm -hmm. which is right next to us. It's, there's interesting stories all over. If you Key take West. the hop on hop off trolley tour, you'll get that story. Yeah. <laughs> And that's one of the stops, is the southernmost it is. point buoy. So all of these things that we did, and we did some other ones, but these are ones that we really, really love. But mm -hmm. there's a couple that we didn't do. That we probably should have. If we had known, Yeah. you know, we would have. So the first one, and this one is free, is the, the Sunset at Sunset Mallory, Mallory Square. Mallory um, Square. We didn't really do that because we had gone multiple times on the boats at Sunset. And then we had some really bad weather days while we were there, so it never really was a good clear day for a sunset. But it is something that you should do if you're there. Um, best place in the world to see the sunset. They have a celebration during the day. There's always something going on. Mm -hmm. Music, vendors, food, performers. Um, and if you're looking at it just right, when the sun gets down at the horizon, you gotta have like the perfect weather day for this. <laughs> it looks like a flash of green light when the sun just as it sinks out of sight. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, some people say it's, uh, pirates say it's like uh, pirate light, but I don't know, ghost or something. But all it is, you know, it's just the way that the, the light hits the atmosphere. So again, yeah, you have to be in the right spot at the right time, the right day. The last thing that we really wanted to do, and we're planners and we still failed on this. Because we didn't know. You know, um, if you're one for national parks, you got to check this one off your list is the Dry Tortugas. Yep. You know? So the Dry Tortugas is an old Civil War fort that was out in it's 70 miles off of Key West. And it's a national park now. There's no services. There's no uh, there's no food. There's no water out there. And it's not like you can just walk there. So you have to make <laughs> a reservation either on a ferry, take a boat out there or fly out there. Airplane. And what we learned is you need to book that like two to three months in advance just to, during the busy season just to be safe. Uh, we were there in January and February and they said we don't have anything until April. Um, now you can go charter a boat and have someone take you out there. You can rent a boat somewhere uh, as long as you are very good on the open ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't get lost and you feel comfortable doing that. That's an option you can go out there. You but it's kind of pricey. So really, the going to the Dry Tortuga is it may be a national park and free, but getting there is going to cost you some money. So it's something you, you got to plan for. Sorry, I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> so those are our fun things that we did at Key West that you can do with or without family. Mm -hmm. um, really enjoyed it. Highly recommend going there if you ever get the opportunity. And you if you can, yeah, just put it on your bucket list. And if you think, hey, I can't afford this, there are some, some times you can go where it's cheaper. Uh, there are some things you can do to save some money. Anyway, leave us a comment down below. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And Hit the notification bell. Yeah. Subscribe. Yep. And as always, life's an adventure. Hop on. Thank you for watching. We'd love to share our journey with you. So hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you know when a new video is uploaded. And don't forget to leave your comments down below and hit the like button.